Even at age 76, Donald Trump's still got it. And by it, I mean, of course, the ability to make previously sane, rational, calm, thoughtful, otherwise intellectual, cultured, and reasonable people go absolutely crazy, so absolutely crazy, that they wind up driving their careers and their reputations into a brick wall. The latest phenomenon, the latest victim of this phenomenon, which I like to call Trump-induced reputation destruction, <laughs> or turd for short, is Sam Harris. Now, he was once a darling of the left for his fundamentalist crusades on behalf of atheism, and he would later get into trouble with some of his former fans for the crime of Islamophobia. But now, as if trying to win back the hearts of his old radical pals, high-minded moralist Sam Harris has gone off on a deranged rant about Donald Trump and the Hunter Biden laptop. It all started on his trigonometry podcast and his defense of the censoring of news about the laptop by big media and the tech giants, despite the fact that just about everyone, including the New York Times, now acknowledges that, yeah, the laptop was the real deal. It, it, at the 11th hour, when it's when who knows how this election is going to go, who, know, who knows what the capacity for you know, disinformation at the last minute to, to tip the balance is, then what do you do with the Hunter Biden laptop story when we already know, we, we know how this played out in 2016 with the Hillary Clinton email you know, press conference where, where Comey, in, 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 a, in an abundance of scrupulosity, felt like he had to come before the cameras, I think, 10 days out from the election and say, you know, we've, we're going to open up this, this investigation again. Scrupulosity. Yes, there's nothing like scrupulosity. That's a hell of a made-up <laughs> word there, Professor. But they're not content with defending the idea that the laptop shouldn't have been reported. Harris got out his really big shovel and started digging his hole even deeper. Listen, I don't care what's in Hunter Biden's. I mean, Hunter Biden, at that point, Hunter Biden literally could have had, had the corpses of children in his basement. I would not have cared, right? It's like it's, there's nothing... First of all, it's Hunter Biden, right? It's not. It's like it's not Joe Biden. But even if Joe, like even the, whatever scope of Joe Biden's corruption is, like if you if we could just go down that rabbit hole endlessly and and understand that he's getting kickbacks from Hunter Biden's deals in Ukraine or wherever else, right, or China, it is infinitesimal compared to the corruption we know Trump is involved in. Yes, that's right. He really said that he wouldn't care if Hunter Biden was keeping the corpses of children in his basement. That's how bad Trump was and needed to be stopped. Indeed, he said Trump was so bad. You got to think about this. Trump was so bad that the share that the share market grew by 56 percent. Annual growth was around 2.5 percent until the pandemic hit. Household wealth hit historic highs. And again, until the pandemic, thanks, China, the portion of Americans who fell below the poverty line declined to the lowest level ever recorded in 2019. Just terrible times there, Sam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, during that time, Putin and Xi stayed in their boxes. And under Trump, for the first time since Nixon, the U.S. didn't get involved in any new stupid wars mm -hmm. overseas. What a monster! <laughs> Speaking of China, Sam continued to dig his hole further in that direction, saying... Well, sure, okay, fine. Yeah, it was a conspiracy against democracy. But so what? Now, that's not, that doesn't answer the people who say it's still completely unfair to not have looked at the laptop in a timely way and to have shut down the, you know, the New York Post's Twitter account. Like, that, that's a, just a conspiracy, that's a left-wing conspiracy to deny the presidency to Donald Trump. Absolutely it was. Absolutely, right? But I think it was warranted. Yeah, I mean, it was warranted. I mean, who needs democracy and all those stupid people making choices, right? Oh, God. Once again, the people who scream the most about Trump about being a fascist are again revealing themselves to be a bit, well, fashy themselves. Anyway, it doesn't matter because Trump wasn't just a horrible man. According to Sam Harris, he was a great big orange asteroid hurtling towards Earth. You're saying you are content with a left-wing conspiracy to prevent somebody being democratically re-elected as president.
Well, no, I'm, I'm content. Well, so it's, but the thing is, it's just not left wing, right? So Liz Cheney is not left wing, right? Liz Cheney is doing everything in her power. You're conspiracy to prevent somebody no, being democratic. It's not a, no, but there's nothing conspiracy. It's not. It, it was a conspiracy out in the open. It does, but it doesn't matter if it was. A, it doesn't matter what parts conspiracy, what parts out in the open. I mean, I think it's like if people get together and talk and talk about what should we do with, about this phenomenon. You know, if, if it's like if there if there was an asteroid hurtling toward Earth. <laughs> if oh, Harris wow. dug himself oh, any deeper, Christ. he'd probably strike oil, which is used to power all those nasty planet-killing internal combustion engines. Or maybe he would have even hit coal, which is a crucial fuel for keeping nice, clean electric cars on the road. But I digress. After being widely criticized and told in the words of commentator Jack Posobiec that he had just set his career on fire, Harris tried to backtrack with, of course, a Twitter thread. Harris claimed that, quote, there is a podcast clip circuiting that seems to be confusing many people about my views on Trump, <laughs> which is understandable because I wasn't speaking very oh. clearly. Oh, Sam, I think you were being pretty clear, mm. but do go on. Next tweet. On the podcast, I was speaking narrowly about the wisdom and propriety of ignoring the Hunter Biden laptop story until after the election. I've always thought this was a very hard call ethically and journalistically. Oh, well, in other words, Sam, you were saying exactly what she meant, yeah. <laughs> which is that Joe Biden had to be elected and Donald Trump had to be stopped by any means necessary. Harris went on. But given what happened with the Anthony Weiner laptop in the previous election, oh, yeah, remember that, guys? Mm -hmm. I think it was probably the right call. Again, this is not helping your case, Sam, but he continued and said that nothing I said on this podcast was meant to suggest that the Democrats would have been right to commit election fraud or any oh, other illegal no. measures to deny Trump the presidency, nor do I think they did that. <laughs> well, OK, but this is all fascinating because Harris, who has always tried to till the moral soil between those who say all ethics are subjective on the one hand and those who say there are fundamental rights and wrongs on the other, is so clearly here trying to have it both ways. You see, like so many people who think themselves perhaps more clever than they actually are, Harris has spent the last six or so years using opposition to Trump as a sort of moral lodestone. But for someone who has always claimed to want to challenge people to not be lazy in their thinking, this is the ethical equivalent of lying back in a deck chair by the pool while a white-coated attendant brings you pina coladas on the half hour. Now, it may feel good, but it's the path to sloth, and it may be fun for a week or two. Six years of it can make you very slothful indeed. <coughs> but that's what happened here. Harris, like so many others, has fallen into the trap of not having any positive morality to rally behind, so he uses reflexive opposition to Trump as his guide and ignores even his own grisly hypothetical about dead children in the Hunter Biden basement. But the fact that Trump was objectively so much better for America and the world than the disastrous Joe Biden must particularly gall him, given that in his book, The Moral Landscape, Harris contends that the only viable moral framework is one where morally good things pertain to increases in the well-being of conscious creatures. Anyway, it all got a bit too much, even for Sam's questioner, Constantine Kissin. Have a look. We have a massive problem. We have an existential threat, right? Politically speaking, I consider Trump an existential threat to our democracy, right? Now, it's not, he's not going to destroy the world, very well, likely. He destroyed but, democracy in the process of protecting democracy. No, that, but that doesn't destroy... No, our... our I'm not... What I'm not suggesting, at no point was I suggesting we should stuff ballots no, or, or, no. or actually break the machinery of democracy. But, no. but oh, when you're trying God. to stop an asteroid, I guess we can all be a bit flexible about our high-minded moral ideals.